successful meetings and ultimately successful collaborations are about people, first and foremost. When you can't have everybody in the same room with you, it's important to be able to see them, to be able to interact with them, along with the information that you're working on. The only way that we could make it happen every day is to use GoToMeeting. I'm Michael Parrish Dudell, entrepreneur, speaker, and best-selling author of Shark Tank Jumpstart Your Business. This is a show about discovery, about showcasing the next generation of business and media influencers. It's new, it's now, it's the next crop. Hi everyone, welcome to The Next Crop. I'm Michael Parrish Dudell. My guest today is Tarek Pertu, the co-founder of Wakefield and the creator of the Uncubed Conference. Hey, Tark, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Tark, we're talking right now about what employers need to know in order to attract really great talent, and then on the other side, what people who are looking for an opportunity need to know mm -hmm. to attract a really great company. Right. So let's start with the employer. If I'm an employer and I'm watching this, and I say, listen, I'm looking for some really great young talent, I have this startup, what do I need to know? Where, where, where do I begin? Sort of the theory about, amongst all of it is just begin internally. You know, ask. It depend, I don't know. It depends on what size company you're at, obviously. But if, if you're a growing company, it's start internally and then try to branch out. But that's that that goes for that goes for any company. I think the interesting thing about startups is there's a particular set of skills that seems to um, be most relevant at different stages of the company. So mm -hmm. at the very beginning, if you're, you know, if you're software play, most of your hires are going to be developers, and they're going to be on a particular development platform or stack, I guess. And um, and so you have to just find the, I guess, the pockets and the areas of where that talent is. So for me, what I recommend in a lot of companies is get involved with meetup groups, groups that are, that are organizing meetups around a particular skill set, sponsor it, you know, be available, be a part of it. Uh, I've seen that work very successfully if you're a larger startup and you have a bigger space host events, but be creative with them, get people an idea of what culture is like internally. Surprisingly, Tarek and I also met, I think we met at a meetup. We, yeah, we, we met at, yeah, the, the at content, content meetup. Meet yeah, the content yeah, yeah, yeah. Meet that's right. So that does work. That proof, does work. Proof positive yeah, that that go. is an interesting, okay. That's exactly right. Meetups yeah. work. Anywhere meetups you work. can actually like be a part of a community and be an authority in it or whatever you might, or whatever, whatever you know, however you want to call it, um, is going to be your, to your benefit. And the good thing about startups is we're not hiring like thousands of people, you know, yeah. even the big ones that have, you know, again, startups is a term that it's tough to, it's tough to figure out how, how you're going to define it, but companies that have to say two, three, four, 500 people, you know, maybe they're hiring at most 10 a month, let's yeah. say. That's super manageable if you go to events and you do things like that. Or so for, on the employer side, it's important to be participating in that as well? Participation, right, yeah. So maybe that's the word I'm looking for, is participate in the community, be a part of it. It's, you know, your brand's not that well known, so posting job opportunities elsewhere is not gonna work. Of course, if you're pretty effective on LinkedIn and other technologies that people are trying to hatch out to, to connect you with through people, um, I've seen that be pretty effective. But to me, it's like, it's about being, it's about being part of the community and secondary, developing your employer brand. Mm. Can't tell you how many people back what in the day. What does that mean? Let's talk about that employer brand. Yeah, totally. So this is, this is, this is really interesting. So a, a great example is, is Meetup. Everyone knows about Meetup, right? But people don't un understand Meetups, or they don't necessarily understand Meetup's employer brand. Mm. There's 200 people behind this platform. Yeah. But a lot of people outside of the technology world think Meetup is just like a website where people just click a button and they get together and they, you know, it was hatched by, a, a, who knows, a high schooler and they don't understand that there's sales behind it and there's technology behind it and there's marketing behind it to keep the site alive, to keep it popular and to keep money coming in. And people don't realize that. So developing your employer brand is really important and that means getting out there, letting people know that you're a hiring company. That's why Uncubed has been so successful and why so many companies come to Uncubed and put like a massive display on. It's like, we want people to leave here. If they're gonna remember 10 companies, they're gonna remember us and they're gonna tell their friends about us. And that's what I mean by employer brand. So that's on the employer side. Now on the employee side, or their potential employee, mm -hmm. What should they do to really try and, and stand out from the crowd? I hear a lot of people say, oh, you know, I'm applying for jobs, I sent my resume in. Yeah. I said, well, you're not really applying for jobs then because that's not really how it works. You can't just send a resume yeah. and expect in this day and age to see something. What do potential employees need to do in order to stand out? So uh, you can visit our getuncubed.com slash jobs page and see a video of top 10 tips to getting gig at a startup that I, uh, that I teach. So that, that, that'll at least be helpful. But the most important thing, uh, things uh, I'll try to go over here real quickly. One is um, before you apply to a job, know, know about the company, know a lot about the company. And I would say so much so that when you're applying for jobs, start with companies you already know. Mm -hmm. Maybe applications you're using all the time. You know the product really well. Or 
domain expertise, if you're coming, if you're leaving finance, why don't you look at Gust or Square or or uh, Bank Simple or Simple? Yeah. Uh, I know the space super well. I use the product. That's a really good start because then you can at least contribute thoughtfully to the product and the culture of the team because you want to be a part of it. I would say the second most important thing is something I mentioned earlier, and that is getting to know people. You know, making sure that you're out there and you're asking your friends. You know, let let first of all let your friends know what you do for a living. That's one thing I think we all realize. We can go through our Facebook list and be like, I don't know what any of these people do for a living. Help people understand what you do for a living. Okay, that's really important. But if you get yourself out there, you get to know people, really interesting things will surface. And I mentioned that part, uh, briefly earlier, but you're going to go out and you're going to search for these opportunities here. And you're going to be pretty active on some, and you're going to be scouring for opportunities at others. But if I get out there and I know you, for instance, and I know a number of people, when you meet somebody, I'm going to come into your memory if it's relevant. And so my opportunities start here, but then they scale the more that you go out there and know people. Um, but I'd say, at the end of the day, the most important thing is that if it's you and somebody else looking for the job, you need, you need to ask yourself what you need to do to get it. Because if you're not willing to learn a little bit more or be a little bit generous in, in, in what you're going to offer them, meaning like I'll take a salary cut to do work or I'll do it for free, if you're not willing to learn and take sacrifices but somebody else is, yeah. then they're going to get it and they deserve to get it. And I think that's something that people need to understand. That's changed a lot from how the job market used to be. Very much so, yeah. yeah, yeah I think yeah. right now, what we try to teach at Uncubed and, and, and beyond when we're speaking to universities is, now, is, this is the generation where people should, can and should be picky with their careers and leave the generation of work as an obligation and enter the generation of work where I spend almost all of my time should be something that I'm passionate about and that I enjoy. And with thousands of companies growing and hiring that you've never heard of, there's a good chance one of them is the perfect fit for you. Cool, that's great advice. My guest again has been Tarek Pertu. He is the co-founder of Wakefield and the founder and creator of the Uncubed Conference. You can find out more at getwakefield.com or follow him on Twitter at Tarek P. Of course, all of that information is available right here on thenextcrop.com. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.